everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you all are safe and uh, staying at your home so since you are staying at your home i, I have uh, decided to create as many videos as i can so that you know this is the best time for you to learn and this is best time for me to create so i'm utilizing the time i hope you will also utilize your time and uh, keep on learning every day something new so coming with a new uh, you know it's a component today that we will see so maybe you will have some drop downs then you will click on a drop down and you can see this type of output right so as you can see here um, this is a drop down uh, when you click on it some elements are coming and you can you know you can click on it then this will become activated and uh, you know something will happen on based on that so i have shown you both the uh, scenarios whether it is selected or not selected and uh, how it will be looking so i am inspired by a design uh, we can see here okay so this is the design so you can see that i have tried to match uh, the design a lot and only colors are left so anyways colors does not matter here but i have matched the design a lot and uh, as you can see when we click on this it goes up and down so what you will learn today uh, by going through this video so first thing you will learn about overlay second you will learn about material uh, shapes uh, and you can see that this is also a material and it has some elevation as well as it has a shape so you will learn about that then uh, you will uh, learn about factory methods so if i take you through the code i will not show you code right now but i will create a custom drop down where uh, if i minimize this if i minimize this so i have created multiple things so this will be our class structure we will have arrow clipper so basically it is used here uh, as a container this is arrow shape so when we are using this container in a material we need to have a shape right so same clip method is used in shape border then drop down item so basically this is one item drop down item and collection of these is a drop down okay the rest all custom drop down just contains entry of this okay so we will see um, how we will go forward with this and i'm very excited that uh, you have chosen this video to be viewed okay so let's start this is a, a, a only a sample uh, dart file uh, it will not be uploaded as a project on github uh, but before that uh, let me tell you uh, it is just a flutter samples project i keep on creating files here so one more file will be created other than main.dart and we will be naming it as a, so let me create that it will be custom drop down okay just a normal name to it then we will make material okay and uh, just to uh, consider this that the there are two states of this drop down so one will be when it is closed other will be when it is opened so if for that we will have to use you know a stateful widget and first parameter for us will be is a uh, drop down open that's it so this is our uh, flag which we will maintain whether it is uh, uh, open or closed right now how to use that here so basically we will have some padding okay and uh, yes okay so this custom drop down will come somewhere starting from here okay like this so let's go to custom uh, drop down then we will have uh, so we are already in a scaffold right it's just a common custom widget which can be used anywhere so starting with uh, it will be a definitely a container and uh, so the child will be a row okay and uh, it will have children so let's see the design so it's a text a spacer and an icon okay so let's get back to the code it will be a text which will be call to action and uh, this will be to uppercase always okay for that style we will have uh, color as white okay font size you can take anything so i'm taking 22 right now okay then a uh, spacer right and then an icon 
icon dot so it's a drop down uh, so arrow drop down and arrow drop down comes with a lot of padding okay so that's why we are not giving any height to our container it will be automatically taken okay but uh, let's see the output of it so it is something like this now we have to give color to our container which will be shade 600 so this is how it looks at a very uh, far distance from completion so we have to add definitely some padding we will add it as in set symmetric so horizontal will be 16 and vertical will be 8 as you can see here there is already a padding right and uh, we forgot to change the color so let's make it as white and this is how it looks now only thing left for this uh, drop down to be having is it should have a radius so border radius uh, and it will be uh, 8 yes and color if you are using decoration then color should go in the decoration it cannot be outside so this is our drop down right and uh, uh, maybe you can give some weight also font weight to w300 and uh, 5 600 it looks good now okay so after this uh, let's wrap our container in our gesture detector so that it is uh, tappable okay so in the on tap method uh, you know the state will be changed right so set a state and the line that we have to add is is drop down equals to not is drop down so basically if it was false drop down open will become true if it was true it will become false so by default value it is false right okay now uh, we need to add a overlay so overlay will come somewhere on the screen we have to position it okay and then uh, so where we will position so to position it we have to get the size of this widget means this container even this gesture director and uh, we have to get the x position of it y position of it so that somewhere down that offset we can draw our overlay okay so for that we will have a key and that key will be um, any key you can say action key that's it and where you will create that key so you will come here global key and it will be your action key right and it will be your labeled global key which will have a label by default it should means it, it's a requirement that it should have a label so my lab, label will be nothing but the text whatever i am passing okay so to make this custom drop down configurable we can do one more thing we can have a string and text which will be final okay and then we can have a constructor for it right and also uh, we can make it as required okay so now this custom drop down if you come to main dot dart will show us a warning that we need to add the text so we will add call to uh, you know call to nothing just to tell you that we are not now hard coding anything uh, we will just change this call to action to the text from widget so widget dot text and to uppercase that we will apply so now if i uh, have to create labeled global key it will be widget dot text so that it is unique and uh, nothing is there uh, no problems are there okay so since we cannot access widget directly so what we will do we will use init state okay and there we will put this so for now uh, i'm just cutting this and uh, assigning action key here okay fair enough so now action key will be there and if i run it now uh, you can see that call to nothing is there and you know it's configurable from outside world okay fine enough now uh, let's uh, use the action key okay so whenever gesture detector on tap is called uh, so let's use the action key action key uh, let's create a method find um drop down uh, you know you know what we can say data that's it okay then we will have a method void find drop down data okay and we don't need anything else so action key dot current context dot find render object we will store this 
here in render box okay and from this render box we can find out render box dot size dot height okay so we will store this height where in these variables so it will be height uh, width x position and uh, all these are start positions okay so basically this position we will get in x and y as well as height and width also we will get so height will go to height then width will go to width and x position uh, so basically for x position you will have to do something extra you will use, have to use local dot global and i believe that this local to global is doing something you know it is transform points it is calling some heavy method i guess so what we will do we will store this value first in a um, so basically let me explain what is offset dot zero so offset dot zero will be here be, uh, related to this we will find the position of this uh, point okay that's a local to global and then we can store this in a position in an offset okay once we do this we will use this offset dx for our x position and dy for our y position okay and let's print this so we will print everything height we are going to print so that you can see uh, how easy it is to find uh, you know position and size of the widget okay y position so let's run it and let's open the run come run uh, window if i'm clicking on this i can see that 42 which is my height okay 350 which is my width 32 is my x position and 48 is my y position so basically 32 from here and uh, uh, 48 from top okay so if you see uh, we are coming back to here and uh, yeah so this 32 and 48 i will show you why 32 from left hand side it is started and 48 from top that's why the position here okay so we are correct in these uh, values now we will create the uh, so now we will have to create a ui uh, which will be opened in a overlay entry and it will be uh, it has to have some position so we will do that now okay let's create a method which will return us of uh, overlay entry okay so overlay entry create floating drop down okay so this is going to return overlay entry which requires a builder and builder takes in a context as a parameter then it should return a widget okay so builder says that uh, it should return a widget uh, suppose uh, so i will return um, a container first of all let me uh, take things step by step so color you can say any color uh, just we will see where it is how how it happens where it will be positioned okay so height i can give as uh, you know uh, 200 okay now you need to call this method so when you will call so basically whenever this is uh, this call to action is clicked then you will call it okay so let us call it and uh, right okay and store the value uh, in uh, overlay entry so it will be floating drop down this is our uh, drop down that is being created so basically i'm returning a widget you can say no it's a class so it actually provides a widget using builder method okay so we are returning this overlay entry and we are storing it in floating drop down now how to open it and how to remove it so basically we need two things when we click on this and we have to open it and then we when we click on this again then we have to remove it okay so how you can add it so you will go overlay dot of context dot insert okay this is your method to insert and here it asks for overlay entry so you will just use floating drop down this will insert okay so let's see what happens exactly okay so i am clicking on this and i have got the container right i have got the green container of course 
it has taken complete height and this is very weird that container even if i have given as 20 uh, 200 height it takes whole of the screen so this is irrelevant to give uh, now just a small thought you can do this to make it as 200 height okay so let's see yes so this is a workaround so whenever your container is taking complete screen size you just put that in a column so that it takes a fixed height okay anyways this is not our concern so we will go with container we will remove this column okay but we will wrap this with a position widget okay now we can give any position but will it be beneficial because our uh, field will be here if you give it any position you know it can be at any place in the screen which is not right so it should be just below the uh, this field and uh, it should just below the below this field as well as it should be aligned to the left of this field right so what should be the left basically we used x position we extracted that position here so we will use x position to position it then what will be our right so if you see this is your screen okay from right how many pixels should be there so you cannot detect it right so basically you don't have to give right you have to give width what should be the width of this width of this should be similar to same to this width so we also have width with us so we will give width and the documentation says that either of three things left right and width you can use two items so you cannot use all three items to position means horizontally uh, horizontal uh, scenario if you see you cannot use left width and right you can use only two of them similarly you cannot use top bottom and height okay you can use only two things out of this so in this case we will be using top and height okay and uh, for horizontal alignment we, we are using left and width so what will be the top now we have y position y position plus height that is the starting point of our drop down okay so y position plus height is our starting position of course this gap we will uh, we will uh, you know uh, ask our drop down to add this gap on its own okay then what is the height so considering this arrow is of 40 and each of these item is of same height as of this item okay so height 1 height 2 height 3 height 4 4 into height plus 40 okay so it will be 4 into height plus 40 this is our assumption okay now let's run it and see what is the output so now if i click it is at the correct position this is perfectly fine right since we are done with this do we have something when we click on click on this again does it hide no so we have to write code in our set state method okay so basically there will be a if else statement if is drop down open then you have to overlay dot of context or you can do this thing floating oops uh, maybe overlay dot of context dot remove yeah so we have to actually uh, make this a public variable okay it cannot be local variable because using this only we can remove it so the method is this okay so to call this method here you need to have this outside right so we will take it here fine uh, not final overlay entry and floating drop down then i think okay okay so we have to do this yes correct now else so if it is not opened then you have to find it uh find the data create it and then insert it so all these three statements will go here. and the last statement which is this one it is it will be always there uh, for if as well as for else so let's see whether this box goes out or not so it is going out 
now we have to add uh, our drop down only okay so let's create a widget which will be drop down right and instead of this container we are going to have drop down okay and you can mention height so height uh, probably no you have to mention each high items height okay so that will be height so that we can you know sometimes it can happen that you want to provide list of items right so you will uh, multiply number of items in the list into height which can be done directly in the drop down that's why i am just taking item height i am not taking height of this okay so let's create this field item height in our drop down widget okay now we will take a column which will be a uh, so first item i want some gap uh, from top because uh, you know as you can see in the image there is little gap here so this gap we will be using sized box with height parameter height. okay then of course uh, we will take a container and we will provide a clip path to it so we will make a triangle out of it now remember i could have used icon dot icons uh, arrow draw drop up but this icon has a padding okay as i told you previously it has already some padding if i add this this will not uh, complete our uh, completely match our design so i cannot use this that's why i have chosen this way to create a container with the shape you can ask your designer for the image that's not a big deal okay so for decoration uh, i will take box decoration and then uh, we'll have color or probably do i need this let's see red dot shade 500 or 600 okay which we took earlier also so it was 600 um where it was yeah it was 600 so we are going to consider 600 for the non-selected item height i will take as 30 and or 20 width as 30 okay uh, so let's see how it looks so if i click on this okay this is the place now definitely i want to first of all clip it so i will wrap this in a clip path okay so which will need a clipper and this first time in my videos uh, i will create a clip which is very easy so it will be a uh, arrow clipper okay so you will create a class named arrow clipper which will extend custom clipper okay and then okay path dot so first of all i will move to here which is zero comma size dot height move to zero comma size dot height i suppose you are understanding this then i will move till here which is size dot width by two comma zero size dot width by two and zero and then i will move to the rightmost part uh, sorry not move uh, sorry this should be line two then i will move to the rightmost part which will be size dot width size dot height which is right bottom and then i will run it again and if i click on it i have the triangle okay so uh, now this triangle should be positioned somewhere here and some padding should be there from left hand side so uh, you can uh, wrap this in a align widget okay and alignment you can give as uh, left sorry top left and let's see the output so it is completely on the left hand side that's why top left will not work anything which is already defined will not work basically all these top left top center top right these will not work so you can see the values right uh, these are some of the values which deal with 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, and these are double values so we are going to play with these values and we are going to give decimal values 
so my y will be um, zero itself if i'm not wrong let us see it should be zero and this should be 0 0.1 let's see what is the output okay it moved there uh, then i will do it minus 0 0.1 so it moved little bit left then i will do this so it is moving sufficient enough right so i will make it 85 which is very nice point if i play with this 0 0.5 then it will be it will not work uh, minus because its height is that much only so y will not work okay width of course it has taken complete uh, so it was uh, the, the width was uh, completely uh, because this drop down has this total width that's why we were able to play with the width okay after this alignment we will have a container okay which uh, you know which will have a uh, some height so height of it will be four items so it, this will be your four into item height okay and decoration uh, box decoration you will have border radius uh, because it is uh, you know uh, the so i'm creating this container which has some border radius inside this there will be four items okay so continuing with that color of this will be again red um, or we don't need to give color to this probably yeah we will give to the each item right so we will take a child column and then we will create a children so multiple children will be there and drop down item will be each children that we will create now so class or stateless drop down item right and what it needs so it needs a text okay and then it needs a icon okay then it also needs um whether it is selected or not so uh, bool is selected very well because uh, you know this is selected one and these are not selected so based on that we need to change the color also right so we will create a constructor out of this okay it is very similar to what we created for this okay so we are going to do the same thing we, are, we will just copy paste it so this is our container and uh, we will copy this let's see if we need to change something okay yeah so we have copied and instead of widget we need only text which we have passed okay icon data we will replace it with and now come uh, and uh, one second okay it is icon so we have to make it an icon data yeah now we will see whether um, what else is left so we will see it later but let's add all four items first of all so text okay add new okay view profile settings about so all these are created now let's see the output great uh, this is fine uh, but yeah of course many things are left here uh, so first of all um, this container uh, should have some elevation right so we will deal with this uh, lines uh, in future but first of all let's see uh, this container should be wrapped in a material because it should have some elevation so i'm taking elevation as uh, 20 okay so that's what i was saying if i add material then these lines will go on go off because uh, i have also assumed i mean observed this previously it happens like this sometimes okay now one thing we did wrong that is 
you know um these are items um so basically now i am going to introduce factory methods to you okay but uh, before that let's add uh, you know first of all can you see that this arrow uh, is behind your this material okay so to make that we will use arrow shape so we will use arrow shape here okay and we will create similar to arrow clipper we are going to create not a custom clipper this time but uh, we will create a shape border okay and then there are five methods unfortunately but you can copy this your your method you can copy uh, ex uh, excluding the override and you can do this then call this get clip method in outer path okay now get clip method needs a size so you can use rect to get it rect dot size okay and then if you run it you will see that this arrow uh, does not is not behind okay so it is on top now it is on top means it is with uh, your uh, your material okay and fortunately uh, let me just revert this one second one thing i have to show you using this arrow shape has also removed these white boxes these white boxes okay so this has helped us in this context okay now we only need to see what happens with these two things so as you can see here if we see the design properly my first element has a uh, left border radius and left top border radius and right top border radius and my last element has left bottom and right bottom border radius so here comes a requirement for factory methods okay so what you can do is uh, in your drop down items <coughs> uh, you must have seen something like this raised button dot icon you must have seen this icon okay so these icons are factory methods okay these make sure that you have icon and label at least put in and if you only use a raised button then there is no such requirement of they being required okay similarly so it makes uh, using drop down item or raised button item these type of widgets uh, extensible uh, with some extra functionalities okay so i am going to create a factory method which is a drop down item dot first okay and this is going to take three things only text icon data and is selected okay it will take string text uh, icon data as icon data and bool is selected so these things it will take and in turn it will return a drop down item with all these values okay fair enough so text will go in text basically this text will have this text value and similarly all uh, parameters will have respective values and is selected will have is selected now of course there is a need for this first right so what is that need what i will do is I will have two more parameters which will be final bool is first item okay final bool is second item okay then since they are final I will have to add them in the constructor and by the name itself they suggest that if it's a first item then this should be true if it's the sorry if it's the last item then it this should be true and both of these if they are false then it's a normal item so here uh, you can understand that if uh, by default i will make all the items as not first item as well as not the last item basically my default item is this and this the second and third items not the first and the last one okay so in my drop down item dot first I will make is first item as true and is last item as false. Now, how the user will use it? So, 
this is my first item <coughs> i will just have to add first here <coughs> this will in turn call this method and mark is first item as true and is la last item as false which is actually a false right so you can also remove it okay we can remove it because it is by default false so if we don't provide it is by default false right and similarly we will create another factory method which will be last and this time my is last item will be true okay and this is your factory method that's it now if you are using drop down item it will call this constructor wherein these both values will be false if you are calling first then it will call first and if you want to call last then it will call the last item which is where in last item is true now we need to utilize these values that's it so for first item we need border radius only for top okay but in our case we are using for all the items here here and here and here so all the corners we are consuming that's why this container in the drop down item now based on is um right so we will use a vertical where we can give top or bottom what will happen top means both the top radius top corners one and two and bottom means both the bottom corners which is this and this so in case of if first item is there if is first item then we are taking uh, radius dot circular uh, 8 okay for top and otherwise if it is not a first item then it will be radius dot 0 okay similarly if it is last item we are going to take radius dot circular 8 for bottom otherwise it will be radius dot 0 okay okay if it is last item yeah so if it is false if first item and last item both are false then no border so basically top borders this and this and bottom borders this and this will not be there it will be zero okay let's see the output correct so for these two items there is no border for this and this there is last item border and first item border right now we just have to play with color now so if this item is selected we need to change the color okay so if this is selected it should be colors dot red dot shade 900 and otherwise if it is not selected it should be 600 so my second item is selected oops so yeah uh one uh, what happened boolean expression must okay 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 fine 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 so by default is selected should also be false so basically wherever i have not provided uh so it is null that's fine okay so if i call this again um what happened have oops right right uh, yes so what is happening i'm passing uh, uh, i'm not passing is selected from this uh, uh, constructor and this factory constructor so that's it i need to provide is selected as false for this and i will do it for all okay so that we are in we know what we have to do that's it okay so now it looks like our design except for the colors of course i was not able to match them with this design and there is also gray background we have white background but this thing works okay and this you can use anywhere it is very handy tool handy visit uh, just uh, to see whether how it works with both items as to or this thing like this so it works pretty nice and i hope you learned a lot in this video so main topics that we covered were overlay entry we covered uh, factory constructors and uh, 
we covered uh, shape borders as well as custom shapes using custom clipper okay so i hope you like the video and i i do believe that you will share it with your friends in this home um, you know lockdown period so you will uh, definitely share it with your with your friends and you will not stop learning and uh, uh, i will try to post uh, more videos so that you can utilize this time and uh, also if you if you're not a subscriber to this channel do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that i post okay thanks for watching and uh, uh, stay tuned thank you